If you need portable electric power, you might turn to a battery. For example, this AA alkaline cell, or this lithium ion battery, or even this sealed lead acid battery. Batteries offer a convenient way to convert chemical reactions into electrical energy. Before we look at how that actually happens, let's take a look at how the modern battery was invented. Benjamin Franklin first used the term battery in 1749 to describe a group of capacitors he had hooked together to perform some experiments. Previously, battery had meant any series of similar objects grouped together to perform a function, for example, a battery of artillery. In 1780, the Italian scientist Luigi Galvani was dissecting a frog stuck to a brass hook. As he touched his iron scalpel to the frog's leg, the leg twitched. Galvani believed that the twitching was caused by energy in the leg itself. However, his fellow scientist, Alessandro Volta, theorized that the contractions were caused by the two different metals soaked in a liquid. Volta experimented with different metals, published his findings in 1791, and then ultimately created the first modern battery in 1800. It was called the Voltaic Pile and would form the basis for future battery innovations. This first battery consisted of stacks of zinc and copper plates separated by cloth soaked in salty water, or brine. Over the next 200 years, scientists and researchers would create new chemistries and methods for producing more reliable power from batteries. That's all great, but how do they work? Batteries are made up of three main components. First, there's the anode. It's always marked as the negative side on a battery. Electrons flow out of the anode. Then there's the cathode. This is marked as the positive side. Electrons flow into the cathode. And then there's the electrolyte. This is usually a liquid or gel that reacts with the anode and cathode. When we connect a circuit to the battery, a chemical reaction occurs between the anode and the electrolyte. This reaction produces electrons in a process known as oxidation. At the same time, another reaction occurs between the cathode and the electrolyte. This reaction requires extra electrons and is known as reduction. To make these reactions happen, electrons from the oxidation side need to move to the reduction side. The electrolyte makes it very difficult for the electrons to move from the anode to the cathode, but we can help them out by providing an electrically conductive circuit between the anode and the cathode. This allows us to put the electron flow to work in our circuit by doing things like lighting LEDs, spinning motors, and running microcontrollers. The chemicals in a battery will ultimately reach a state of equilibrium, and that means they won't react with each other, and the electrons will stop flowing. At this point, your battery is considered dead. Some batteries, like this AA alkaline cell, cannot be recharged, and they need to be thrown away once they're dead. They're known as primary cells. Other batteries can be recharged, for example, this lithium ion pack. They're known as secondary cells. Recharging occurs by applying a reverse current to the cell or cells, and this switches where the reduction and oxidation reactions happen. This causes the battery to return to more or less its original state. To demonstrate how all this works, we can create our own crude battery out of a lemon, a zinc-plated screw, and a penny. When the battery is producing a current, the zinc in the screw is our anode and reacts with the acid in the lemon. This produces electrons that can be moved through our circuit to the penny. The penny is our cathode and accepts the electrons, which are used in another chemical reaction. The electrical potential between the anode and the cathode is about 0.9 volts. If we connect four lemons in series, we can raise the potential high enough to light an LED. It might be a bit dim, so you probably want to look at it in a dark room. As you can see, batteries are incredibly useful devices for storing electrical potential energy in a portable format. Without them, we'd still have to be doing things like hand cranking our cars or playing video games with corded controllers. Ah, the good old days. Click the link in the description below if you want to read more about batteries and how to use them in your projects. Click subscribe if you want to see more fun science and electronics videos. Thanks for watching.